Praise the Lord. Amen. Good morning. We serve an awesome God. Amen. Amen. Father, we just commit this time into your hands. We thank you for what you have in store for us, God. Father, I would even pray like Paul prayed for the Ephesian church, that you would open the eyes of our heart, Lord, that you would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus, that you would enlighten the eyes of our understanding to see him in a fresh new way today. That we would know what is the hope of our calling, God. It's an awesome high calling. The riches of the glory of your inheritance in us, your people. Father, in the exceeding greatness of your power toward us who believe. Help our unbelief, God, and increase our faith today, we pray. We just want to worship you. you you've been faithful, you've been good, and you're worthy of our praise. Amen. Amen. Let's worship our King. This is definitely a song, a prayer of petition in this song. Yeah. 
sounds good. some praise. Hallelujah. Good to see you today, Lord, in a fresh way. Now we're going to sing about our awesome God, a song of declaration. Hallelujah. He is a bad dude. His sleeves, he ain't just putting on the ritz. Our God is an awesome God. There's thunder in his footsteps and lightning in his fists. Our God is an awesome God. The Lord wasn't joking when he kicked him out of Eden. He wasn't for no reason that he shed his blood. The turn is coming close. Better be believing our God is an awesome God. in the void of the night. Our God is an awesome God. He spoke into the darkness and created the light. Our God is an awesome God. Oh yeah. Judgment and wrath he poured out on Sodom. Mercy and grace he gave us on the cross. I hope that we have not too quickly forgotten our God is an Sleeves, he ain't just putting on a ritz. Our God is an awesome God. There's thunder in his footsteps and lightning in his fists. Our God is an awesome God.
You are awesome in this place this morning, Lord. I want to be on his side when he comes back. Amen. Amen. In the book of Revelation, it says his eyes were ablaze with flaming fire, and on his head were many crowns <clears throat> with a vesture dipped in blood. He's coming back as a warrior king. The first time he came back, meek and mild to redeem, but the next time he's coming back to rule and judge. I want to be riding with him. Amen. That's, Amen. It's a privilege the saints have. Amen. <clears throat> this song's kind of a testimony. You serve an amazing God. Write the story of our life. Now this story has begun. Created by your hand. Unveiled through your son. Grace that redeems has made us free.
I stand in awe before you I fall into the wonder of your beauty. Lord, I'm amazed by you. I'm overwhelmed by you. In the light of your is still amazing. <clears throat> You're going to get to know that one. Thank you, God. You still make a way where there seems to be no way. You still part red seas, Lord. Thank you, God. The very fact that we're standing here breathing your good air is a miracle. Oh, Lord, enlarge our vision of you today, we pray. You know the mountains in our lives, Lord. We commit them to you. <clears throat> and we speak your grace to them and say, move in Jesus' name.
see it. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're faith. working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never, never stop. stop. You, you never, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. for a moment and remember that you never change. Thank you. Thank you for being consistent and faithful and true. And Lord, thank you for lifting our heads. Thank you for reminding us how big you are. You are so you make a way when it seems like there is no way. Amen. So God, we praise you. We worship you. We believe in you because we know who you are. You have revealed to your children who you are. And we cry out, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for turning your head heart towards us and for saving us. Lead us on, God. Let us be faithful children. We worship you, God, in this place. In Jesus' holy name, we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. You are way maker, 
miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are. One more time, Lord. Even, even when, when I, I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Amen. You may be seated. Before I pray over the offering, I just want to thank the congregation. Uh, we have met our goals for the Thanksgiving baskets. Everything has come in. So I do thank you for your generosity for that. And those who will be receiving them uh, over the next couple weeks, just be in prayer for those families. As we continue in worship, let's pray for the offering this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your blessings that you've given to us, Lord. And Lord, as we continue in worship this morning, and we just give back a portion that you've given to us, Lord, that, we, uh, that you will multiply this and use this to further your ministries uh, here and abroad, Lord. Lord, we just thank you and praise you for the blessings that you've given to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. I have a few announcements to make for today. Um, our, our social media presence is, is real. And if you are not on our pages, on Instagram, Facebook, or our website, take a peek and uh, see what's happening. We want to, again, I'll echo Charles's thank yous for all of the generosity given. Today is also the last day to sign up it, to sing in the Christmas musical. Our musical this weekend, this year is December 9th and 10th at 7 p.m. both nights. You can con contact Marion Cruz or Jeanette Lumley if you have questions, but today is the last day to sign up. So those of us choir members that have maybe been a little flighty, it's time to get serious, myself included, okay? We're gonna, if we're gonna do this thing, you're gonna be at practice, okay? That's my word, not theirs, but anyway. <laughs> Anyway, practice is today, so please sign up and be at practice. Um, last announcement that I have is please check the lost and found table in the lobby. Um, there are countless things that get left here, and all of us would love to blame our children. Um, it's not, so I'm just going to leave that there. So um, there are some adult things out there that have been left, and please... You know, regain possession of your belongings, or they will be donated to a greater cause. Okay? <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, good. It's on. Good morning. Welcome to Trinity. In the spirit of giving thanks, with Thanksgiving coming up, uh, I've been reading uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 5 uh, and from 10 on. 
and, uh, and I like to read it to you guys. Uh, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may be recompensed for his deeds in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest to God, and I hope that we are made manifest also in your conscience, consciences. We are not again commending ourselves to you, but are giving you an occasion to be proud of us, so that you'll have <clears throat> you'll have an answer for those who take pride in appearance and not in heart. For if we recite ourselves, it is for God. If we are sound of mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him in, in this way no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. Now, and all these things are from God, who reconciled all, us to himself through Christ, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. And he's committed to us the word of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were making an appeal through us, we beg you all on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, so that we may become the righteousness of God in him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you giving thanks for your son, your son who has reconciled our sins that we admit to. We freely admit that we are sinful people. And we are so grateful that we have been reconciled so we may be true ambassadors as well of your son. And that we may be... Our hearts may be softened and our ears may be open to receive the message that you've prepared Pastor Jeff to deliver to us today. And we may be good soldiers on your behalf. In the name of your son, Jesus, amen. Thank you, brother. All right, kids, you may be dismissed. You're all like, finally, thank you. <laughs> All right, while the kids are being dismissed, turn in your Bibles over to Exodus 16. It is my prayer this morning that you walk out of here encouraged. There's a lot of times uh, Sunday mornings, my goal is not that you are encouraged, <laughs> but that you really have a huge desire to change. This morning, that's not my goal. My goal is not to hopefully change you this morning. It's that you see God a little bit more clearly this morning and you are horrendously encouraged by his word uh, this morning. So turn with me to Exodus 16. And here is where we begin. So let the encouragement begin. It doesn't start encouraging, but we'll get there. The whole Israelite uh, community set out from Elim and came to the desert of Sin. Now don't make anything about the desert being called Sin. This is not... You know, it, it was a, it's a completely different language where they named that from. It's also where we get Sinai from, so don't make anything of it. People try to make, oh, they entered into sin. No, no, that's, that's not what is here. Don't read into things that are not here. So it says, the whole Israel community set out from Ilium. Remember, Ilium was the place where there were 12 streams. Right, that had water enough, literally one stream for every tribe. So there was plenty of water where they were. Um, but before they did that, God took them to a place of bitter water. Remember that uh, from last week? All right, so now we are, they're leaving the place of plenty. They're leaving the place that has all the water and everything that they need. And they're leaving there and they're entering the desert. And they go into the desert. And uh, they enter the desert of Sin, which is between Ilam and Sinai. So you can see that's the direction they're going. 
on the 15th day of the second month, so we're 45 days into this, after they had left Egypt. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate the food we wanted, but you have brought us into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Now, I wanted to preach about grumbling and complaining and and all of that, but that's not where we're going this morning. But I want you to see, after 45 days, they have seen some amazing things. They've seen God provide for them in water. They've seen God wipe out the Egyptian army. They have seen some amazing things. And remember, this is all about God building these people. So I need you to ask, if you're God and you're sitting there looking at these people, what is it that they need to 100% know to be able to continue on? And that is your character and your faithfulness. Because really, what is the question that they're grumbling against? They're grumbling against God's faithfulness. Is he going to be here today? He was there yesterday, but is he going to be here today? And the answer to that is yes. He will be here today. Guess where he'll be tomorrow? He will be here tomorrow. The problem is we are not geared that way. Because we cannot see him, that is not how our mind is working. So they leave the place of plenty where they're being provided for. And it's easy there to say, ah, God is good. He's gotten us in this place. And they stayed there for quite a long time. Remember, they had only gone for three days into the place where Mara was, where they drank the bitter water. And they were like, we can't drink this. And then uh, God changed that water to good water. Then he led them to Elium. So they have had all that they have needed for 45 days. The second they don't have what they need, they begin to panic. Sound familiar? Right? The second we take our eyes off of what is really happening, we begin to panic. And God is trying to teach his people. He doesn't go, I'm going to strike them dead, Moses. (laughs) Do you hear them complaining? I'm going to wipe them out. No. No. God is not frustrated. God is not angry with his people. He is saying, listen, I'm going to show them my character, what they need to know at this time in the very beginning, the very foundational principle I need to build in them is that I am faithful. Not them. It's not about them being faithful. This is not about Israel at all. So if you're sitting there saying, oh, you know what? This is me in here. No, this is about who God is. God is not depending on what he's going to do on the people's responses. He's not depending what he's going to do for them on how they feel or what they say to him or how much they're praising him or if they've come up with new songs. That's not what he's dependent on. He said, no, I need them to know my character. So regardless of what they are doing, he is beginning to teach them who he is. And so they begin to grumble and complain, and they're like, what are we going to eat? Now, first thing you need to remember, one of the things that we always do is we romanticize the past and our our life in the past, right? Oh, it was so good back then. How many times have we heard about the good old days and how great everything was and how perfect everything was until I got to where I am now, and now it's really hard? Well, five years from now, you're going to talk about how great things were today, right? Because we have a way of forgetting these things, right? They were slaves. They were throwing their children into the river to drown them. They were beaten. They were torn down. They were not their own people. They were crying out to God in Egypt. And God said, I've heard their cry, so I have come to them. They're not like, hey, no, what is their response? Man, in Egypt, it was a party every night. We sat around pots of food. We got to eat as much as we wanted. Really? Remember when they took away the straw and still made you do more bricks and beat you senseless until then? No, no, I don't remember that. What I remember is the food. It was so good. Do you think they really sat around pots of food every night? No. 
That's not how it was. But we romanticize the past and we hold it against God. And so they say, why didn't you just let us starve? To, why are you letting us starve to death out here? He goes after the basic need that they have. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are going to go out each day and gather enough for that day. And then God begins to tell them how he's going to do it. And it's incredible. In the morning, the people would wake up and there would be dew on the ground, right? You go outside and the grass is wet. You're in the desert. Not a whole lot of dew going on. But the dew would be there every morning. And as the dew began to evaporate, it would leave behind something. We don't know what it was. But it left behind bread for them. Flakes that they could make into bread, that they could boil it, they could bake it, they could make it in a hundred different ways. And it was good. It was really, really good. They said it tasted like honey mixed with cake. I mean, that sounds really good to me. And so here it is. It's not something that God's like, here, I'll just give you bland. You're like, here's oatmeal, you know, with nothing. I know you're all like, I had oatmeal this morning. It was good. I'm just messing with you. It wasn't like lame, right? It wasn't. It was something that was really good. They woke up, and it was there in the morning, and God said to them, listen, gather enough for yourself. Don't gather too much because it won't last until tomorrow. Gather just enough for today. And on the night before the Sabbath, I don't want you to work. You can gather both. So the Israelites, being the Israelites, gathered it up, right? And of course, they gathered too much. And they tried to save it for the next day. They woke up in the morning, and you could tell whose tent had saved the stuff over. Because it was full of maggots, and it stunk. So they learned very quickly not to try to take it and store it and save it. I'm sure the first, uh, the first Sabbath, they were like, okay, um, I'm not sure if I should keep more of this because it was awful the last time we did that. But only on that day could you keep it overnight and it would not go bad. It's amazing. And then when the heat of the day came, whatever this was evaporated. Do you know what the Israelites called this? They called it manna. Do you know what manna means? What the heck is that? That is what the word literally means. What is this? It's a whatchamacallit, right? The ground was covered with whatchamacallit. The ground was covered with, I don't even know what to call this. But they, they gathered it. Now how often did this happen? Did it only happen one day? Did it happen for a week? Did it happen for a month? God did this until they entered the promised land over 40 years later. For 40 years, God provided everything they needed every morning. Why did God do that? Couldn't he have just made their jars keep refilling? Couldn't he have just, I, I don't know, made herds of deer and buffalo roam, right? Where they could go and kill. That's not what God did. God made it so that every morning you got up and were dependent on him. If God forgot to provide for you, you did not eat that day. But he never did. And it was a constant reminder every day, every day that God has them. That God has everything that they need for them every morning. What an amazing relationship building tool that is. To wake up every morning and know that God has provided for you. Now listen, uh, in a few months we're going to celebrate a fat guy who in one day can gum down your chimney and give presents to every person in the world. Right? And we are shocked in awe that one guy can do this. 
What about a God who provides everything we need every day and has never skipped a day? You have a God who provides all of your needs every day, every morning. Let's look real quick at Lamentations. You're like, there's a book called Lamentations? We never really uh, go in there. That's because it's a lamenting one. And that's always full of bad news. Lamentations 3.16 starts off this way. And I love how he starts, and we're going to get into the good news in a second again. He said, he is broken. He's talking about his enemies. He has broken my teeth with gravel. In other words, shoved my face into the dirt. He has trampled me into the dust. I have been deprived of peace. I have forgotten what prosperity is. So I say my splendor is gone and all that I had hoped from the Lord, it's gone. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I remember them and my soul is downcast within me. Do you hear the heart of, of the, the writer in this? He's saying, listen, I am so broken. I am so torn down. All of my hope is gone. Everything that I had is gone. And he does something about it. He says this. He says, yet this I call to mind. So he's doing this on purpose and he's saying, listen, I'm going to bring this to my mind. And therefore, I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his passion never fails. His compassion never fails. His compassion is new every morning, and great is his faithfulness. This verse is talking about the manna. He is saying his compassions are new, his mercies are new every morning. Every morning when I wake up, I have everything that I need. Now, our problem is we try to take today's compassion, today's mercies, today's grace, and store it up for tomorrow, right? That's what we call worrying. I try to take the grace and everything I've been given today to deal with for just today. That's all I've been given for is today. I try to take what I have today and use it for tomorrow's problems. Why? Because deep down inside, I don't believe God will be there tomorrow. Do you understand? We just sang it, right? When we don't see it, he's working. When we don't feel it, he is working. God is still there. He is still moving. He is still working, and he always will be. And every morning, you will have everything that you need. You will have all of the graces. Does he say he will remove my problems every morning? That would be a verse I would love to find somewhere in Scripture. Every morning, my problems are removed. But that's not what he says. Instead, he says, every morning, I will give you everything you need to make it through today. And tomorrow, I will be there again. I will be there again tomorrow. And guess what? The next day, I will be there for that. How many people have heard somebody say, man, I'm just taking it one day at a time. I laugh inside every time I hear that phrase, even if it's in horrible situations, because who can take more than one day at a time? Has there anybody here been able to take two days at a time? Is there anybody here who's been able to take three days at a time? Yeah, man, I'm just taking four days at a time. It's exhausting. We all know this inside. We know we can't do anything about tomorrow. We can do nothing about tomorrow except the grace we have today, we can handle with today. The mercy we have. Now, this is a very nebulous view when you talk about grace. But I think that's why God used bread. I think that's why God used bread every morning to show them, listen, I'm going to provide for you. His provisions are new every morning. What you need emotionally, physically, spiritually, all of it. He has it for you every morning. And he will never, ever forget. A lot of you woke up this morning and you forgot, didn't you? 
You forgot to go pick up your grace, right? You forgot to go pick up the mercies that he has for you. You didn't go out and gather it and say, hey, God, I have enough for today. Thank you. You know what else happened here? It was great. It said those who went out and gathered too little, when they made it home, how much did they have? Just enough. Those who gathered too much, when they got home, guess what? It was just enough. What do you think God was trying to tell them by doing this every morning? Guys, I'm enough. I am enough. Man, if there's one thing I could get to is to get you headphones with a, a tape recorder re repeating, because I don't know how to do it other than that now. I guess to hook up your iPhone and we'll just keep saying, God is enough. God is enough. All day long, you need that reminder. God's enough. What he's given me is enough. The mercies that he's given me today, they're enough. The blessings he's pouring out on me today, they're enough. I'm going to enjoy them. Rejoice, for today is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Let's rejoice because he's given you today what you need. How many of you did not think you could make it through today? Actually, a better question is how many of you thought you couldn't make it through yesterday? Guess what? <laughs> You're here. Why? God's grace. And no matter what you are facing, and as I look around this room, I see that we are facing impossible odds. Well, guess what you're going to wake up to tomorrow morning? Impossible grace. Enough to match what you need for that day. Every day. How many of us keep forgetting that? We're going to see that very soon, that Israel, even though they get to collect it every day, suddenly forget it, right? But we need to understand this, and we need to get it, and we need to get it now, and it's why God begins with this while he's growing his people. He's saying, the first thing my people need is a foundation under their feet that I'm here. A foundation under their feet, something to remind them daily that I have them. That's why we a lot of times talk about our daily bread. You know, we, we, we read through God's word once a day, right? And we call that our daily bread. When, when Jesus teaches us to, uh, to pray, he says, give us today our monthly bread. No, give us our daily bread. Why? Because then I have to come back tomorrow. And I have to ask him tomorrow. Why? Because you were created to be with him. And when I have everything that I need, I don't need to go to him. And then I lose who I am because I'm not with my creator. So daily they had to go out and they had to collect whatchamacallit off the ground. They had to collect manna daily as a reminder of who God is and where God is and what God is up to. I pray that that is an encouragement to your soul. That this morning you understand and that you get. Probably by tomorrow you will forget, but that's the guilt part that we'll deal with later. But that you have everything that you need. May that ring in your ears every day. When you wake up in the morning, say, okay, God, you've given me the grace I need for today. Today looks like a monster of a day. So I'm going to have a monster pile of grace outside my door. Will you give me the grace that I need? And he always does. He is faithful. And we lose sight of that word. God is faithful. You can put your faith and your trust in him. He will provide. His provisions are there every week. They are there every morning. They are there every day. And when you have run out of his grace, it's probably time to go to bed. I'll tell you, you'll never run out of his grace. Ever. Our God is an amazing God. And he says, his mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. 
I say to myself, now listen to this. This is what he says to himself to remind himself. Remember, this, the, the, the one who is writing this is saying, yet I call this to mind. I put this in. That way I have hope. And we're not, we haven't even gotten to the part that he tells himself. He, this is what I tell myself. Because God's mercies are new every morning, I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. Take your highlighter. I don't care. Rip it out of your Bible. Put it on your forehead. I don't care. Have this verse always ready at hand. The Lord is my what? He is my portion. Our problem is we keep walking around this world and we think this world is our portion. Man, we're ripped off if this world is our portion. God is your portion and he gives you himself every morning. Who is Jesus? He says, I am the bread, right? He is the manna. We're celebrating that today. When the Israelites got up, they didn't know what they were actually picking up. They didn't know what was laying out in front of them was a shadow of Jesus. That the food and the manna that was laid out in front of them that they thought was their portion because God was their provider was pointing to who truly is our portion, and that is Jesus Christ. Is he your portion today? Is he enough? If he's not enough, what will be? What will be? And so he says, this is where I find my hope. When I feel my face has been shoved into the ground and my teeth are broken out from the gravel and I am all beat up and torn down and my soul is downcast with me, I call this to mind that the Lord is my portion. And therefore, I will wait on him. The Lord is good to those who hope is in him and to the one who seeks him. This morning, I hope you are encouraged. Be encouraged that your God has given you all that you need, not dependent on how you were today. He's not going to say, oh, today, Ray, you weren't so good, so I'm only going to give you half. Do you see, Israel did not ever go without because of how they acted. God brought to them this manna every day day, irregardless of who they were, because they were his. So he provided for them. Now, yes, were there issues, were there curses and blessings for when they disobeyed and obeyed? Yes. But his provision and his grace is not dependent on us. How many of us act like that is? Oh, I really need God to show up here, so I'm going to be extra good today. That's not how it works. Your God's going to show up either way. His mercies will be there every morning. Everything you need emotionally. Everything you need physically. Everything you need, he will provide. Every morning. Because great is his faithfulness and his love for his children. So I will call this to mind. The Lord is my portion. I'll wait on him. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before your altar to celebrate the sacrifice that you made for us, to eat the manna that you have given us, Father, we praise your name and we glorify you for who you are. Lord, I pray that you would encourage our hearts today our hearts that constantly tell us that we're not enough, that we don't have enough, that, Lord, we will be reminded that your grace is sufficient for us, that, Lord, your mercies are new every morning and how great is your faithfulness. You are my portion. We will wait on you. And thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If I could have the ushers come forward. I hope this morning's communion time has a little bit of a different meaning for you. When we talk about how God has provided and how God has given, 
and that he is the bread of life. That his mercies are new every morning. And then Jesus says, this is my body broken for you. This bread I give to you. Do this in what? Remembrance. What is the one thing we are awful at? We don't remember. When our circumstances come, we forget. When the hard times come, we forget. That this, this we have an opportunity to celebrate. Jesus allowed his body to be broken, that it would be enough for the forgiveness of your sins, for the restoration of your relationship with God, and that God could be your portion. That's enough for me today. So on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread and broke it. He's showing his disciples, I'm willing to die for you. Take it and eat it and do it and remember me. Don't forget. Don't allow and take your salvation and what Christ's sacrifice was. Don't take that for granted. We serve an amazing God. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to stand here and to take this together as a people, as your people, Lord, remembering what you have done. God, remind us of your faithfulness. As we partake of the bread, Lord, remind us of how faithful you are. You are our manna. We praise you and we thank you. You are our portion. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. What an amazing God we serve. Let's do this in remembrance of him. That same night, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood poured out for you, for the forgiveness of sins. I love the story of the, the man that they lower down in front of Jesus after they tore apart probably Peter's roof, right? And they lower him in front. And Jesus' response is what? Your sins are forgiven. That man had no idea what his biggest problem was. His friends had no idea what his biggest problem was. When we take this, a lot of times we forget how big of a deal our sins are. And he says, this is my blood poured out for you for what? For the forgiveness of your sins. They're forgiven. Your sins are washed clean. You are forgiven your sin is separated from you as far as the east is from the west. All of God's children. Praise God. How often do we take that for granted? So Jesus once again says, do this in remembrance of me. Because we take him for granted way too often.
Is God enough for you? His blood was enough. His body is enough for us. Let's do this in remembrance of him. How do we thank you, Father? How do we even have words to say for what you have done for us? God, we praise you. We thank you for sending your son. Jesus, we praise you for your sacrifice. And Holy Spirit, we need you now. Teach us your ways, Lord. We thank you for who you are. Open our eyes and accept our worship now. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, Lord, for a greater appreciation of what it cost you to redeem our souls. Thank you, Lord. We'll have all eternity for you to break that down for us. And we thank you, Lord, that you serve up your bread fresh every day. Lamb who was slain, holy, holy is he. Sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Right now. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on. 
Father, we stand in awe. We stand in awe of you today. Lord, your faithfulness, your mercies are new every morning. Father, we are forgetful people. We're people who lose sight of who you are very easily. God, I thank you that you're always there calling us back. Lord, you are our portion. Be our portion today. Be enough for us. Our wayward, wandering hearts, be enough for us today. We thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, just a reminder, there's a benevolent offering in the back. And just to let you know, we are going to be ramping up a bit of our benevolent uh, giving out so we need the benevolent going in. So please, uh, please do uh, 
provide for others who are in need. If you don't know what the benevolent offering is, we help take care of uh, people who have needs in our community, in our church, uh, and we rally around one another in incredible ways. And uh, it's not that the benevolent is going low. Uh, you guys have been amazingly faithful. We have never had to turn anyone away for anything. Uh, God has always been good, but I just see on our horizon a lot of stuff coming. So I'm asking, please make sure we give. Thank you. Have a great week.